two junk journals in two totally different styles created simultaneously. Welcome to another episode of this little series here on my channel in which I want to show you that you can transfer any inspiration to your own papercraft project and to your own unique style, no matter if it's a junk journal, a card or any other papercraft project that you might have on your desk at the moment. In today's episode, as you can guess, we're going to talk about stenciling. I want to discuss how to choose a stencil for the style that you want to achieve for your project. I want to talk about mediums that you can use in combination with a stencil. And I also want to talk about how to stencil for the style that you want to achieve. Is stenciling the same as stenciling? I guess not. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thank you very much for joining me today. A quick little note in the beginning. This video is part of a series. So if you are new here or if you perhaps have missed the previous videos, please check out the info box. There's a whole playlist with all of the previous videos of this series so that you can craft along with me if you want. And it would make sense if you want to follow step by step that you watch the other videos first before you watch this one. Before we go into the topic of this video, I would like to quickly explain what you can take from watching me creating two journals simultaneously. The idea behind this series is that you can compare two totally different styles of junk journals directly next to each other. I have created a color palette and already some pages for a clean journal and the same for a grungy journal. Two styles of journaling that are the total opposite of each other. And that is something that could be a reality for you. You watch, for example, a video where someone shows you a junk journal in a very clean style. But you want to make a grungy journal for yourself, meaning how can you transfer what you have seen in this video to what is on your desk? Yeah, so I'm hoping that with um, the chance to compare that directly, that you can transfer that easier to your own project. Of course, there are more than two styles in the world of junk journaling. Yeah, that's totally clear. But I have decided to go with those opposite styles to make the contrast the most biggest. Yeah, the, the biggest um, contrast that is possible in the styles. So if you see something that I do here, you will at the same time see how I would do it here in a totally different style so that you can perhaps with the help of my thoughts and explanations transfer that to your own style. That's the idea. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's first talk about the question how to choose a stencil for your project. How to find the right stencil for your junk journal, for your card or for any other paper craft project that you want to create. If you have a collection of stencils like I have here, my collection is relatively big. I have collected them over the years. And if the choice that you have is relatively big, I think um, it's relatively difficult to find the right stencil. And perhaps you can ask yourself some questions to make it easier. The first question that I would suggest is, which is your favorite stencil? If you don't know which stencil you want to use, you could use your favorite stencil. If you say, okay, this stencil here is my very favorite one, then take this. Why not? Instead of sitting in front of a blank page, it's better to choose what is your favorite, even if you don't use the others, but you have something to start with. 
And in the process, I'm sure it will happen that you think, okay, this is my favorite stencil. I have used it so often and I want to have something new. I want to try out a different pattern. I want to try out different techniques. I think that can come with the process. But if you don't know how to start, choosing your favorites, uh, favorite things, I think is always a good idea. Another question that you could ask yourself is, does my journal have a theme? Yeah, If you have a theme for your journal, then it can be relatively easy to find the right stencil. And you also have the possibility to play around with different styles of stencils. For example, you are working on a journal that has a botanical theme. Then the most obvious choice of those three here would be perhaps this one because this one has botanicals on it and you know botanical theme botanical stencil if you think okay hmm this is obvious then please think about what could i use to make it more interesting not using the most obvious thing can make something way more interesting For example, this stencil here, if you look closer, this has something that looks botanicalish, is that a word, as well. I mean, this is a relatively, um, uh, what is the word, like regular pattern, yeah? For example, this here, it is here as well. That makes it relatively regular. You can find those things that are mirrored on this stencil. This one compared to this is totally different. This has not such a regular pattern. It's more whimsical and irregular. But what if you would use this here with your botanical theme? If you can see some things that remind you to a botanical theme, why not use this instead of using This, that is relatively obvious. And if you think, okay, I want to have a really big contrast. I want to make it the most possible interesting. Yeah, then you could also use this. Why not? This pattern has nothing to do with botanicals. Here are no petals, no flowers, nothing. Yeah, it's straight. It's regular, way more regular than this, I would say. But This can make your um, botanical journal even more interesting. So I would say uh, there are different like steps of choosing the stencil. And if you have something that is very obvious, then try to think a step further before you take this and go on with the stenciling. Yeah, Try to think, okay, if this is obvious, What could be, for example, the next step, the opposite? What could make it more abstract or more loose or more whimsical? Or what is the easiest thing to stencil through? I already know that I want to put some butterflies into my journals later. So I will go with the most obvious thing for that theme for the first technique. Meaning I look at what I have directly in front of my eyes and I'm choosing what is the most obvious thing. And then I'm using that to come into the process and later on I can choose other patterns of my other stencils to go a little bit more abstract or into another direction. So let's choose this one for the first technique. So I have my stencil here. I have both of the color palettes here and I have my pages here. Let's take a totally blank page because that is something that I'm asked very often what to do with a totally blank page. So I will take this one here and I will take this because for the grungy journal, this is relatively blank as well, isn't it? <laughs> so we will put this aside for a moment and we are going to put those directly next to each other so that you can directly compare what I'm doing here. Here on the left hand side I want to stencil with my stencil 
in a really, really clean way. So how can you do that? There shall be no grunge, nothing that is, you know, like bam, just a really clean stenciling. So let's do this perhaps with hickory smoke. I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink pad and this little brush here for the stenciling on this page. Of course, you can use any medium that you like. Yeah, Please use what you have and what you like. You could also stencil with acrylic paints. You could use sprays. You could use whatever you have. Uh, I love the Distress Oxide inks, so I'm using those. And I want to have this stenciling here relatively light. So I'm loading up my brush with not too much ink. Oh, by the way, the number of this stencil is THS031, if you are interested in that. So I'm lining this up here relatively straight with the edge of the page so that the flowers get straight. But of course, you could also do that in a totally different way. And then I want to go over this really, really light with my brush. So I'm going over this with nearly no pressure. Here in the corner of the page, I want to have it a little bit more intensive. And I want to fade it out to the top there, meaning the pressure is here more than there. So I'm going over this here and just applying the ink through the stencil. And I'm also not loading up the brush again. Yeah, As you can see, I'm using um, the brush for the whole stencil that makes it easier to get a nice blend to the top of the page. You will see in a second how that will look when I lift the stencil up. So here on the top, you can see I have nearly no ink left on my brush so that it gets automatically really light here on the top. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. Here it's way lighter than here. And when we lift that up, we have something like this. Here it gives us a bottom for the page because it's darker here and with those lighter shade of the hickory smoke on the top, it seems to go into nothing on the top of the page. So let's talk about what we can what we can do if we want to use the same stencil for the grungy journal. Here we have the clean look, but what can we do? What do we have to do different with the stenciling to reach a more grungy look of the stenciling? First of all, we are going to choose a color from the grungy color palette. Which one shall we use? Perhaps, mm, let's go with brushed corduroy. I will place it exactly where I had it here on the clean page. So I will line that up here with the edge of the page. Then I will take my brush for brushed corduroy. Ooh. Oh no, what the heck? What the heck is going on with those cheap makeup brushes? I could, I could, oh. Now I have this on my page here. Look at that. What is that? I have this shit on my page. <sighs> okay, so don't freak your freak, Louisa. Don't freak out. I will take this and I will go with this directly over the ink pad. And this time <laughs> I'm loading up the brush or what is left from the brush really, really extremely. I want to get much ink into the bristles here. And then I go over this with a lot of pressure. Here on the bottom to get it really really intensive and I'm also loading up the brush in between so that I get more ink and more intensity to the whole stenciling. I want to have much contrast here so that 
we can see a really big difference that it looks more bam more grungy and i wa also want to um, do the same technique like here but a little bit differently now when i go here to the top i also want to blend it out but not so extremely like here you will see in a second what i mean i'm so sorry i can't explain that so good Sometimes, do you know those things that you can do, but that you can't explain? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm also trying to get this not so regular. You will hopefully see that in a second. So I'm pressing down a little bit more here, for example. Um, less pressure here, more pressure here, so that it gets really irregular and more grungy. Then it looks like this. Can you see the difference? Hopefully. And what you then, of course, can also do if you have used a water-soluble medium like inks, for example, you can take some water and you can spritz to the stenciling with your water to get this more loose and more abstract, more grungy, more vintage, more used. Do you know what I mean? So that this gets really like a little bit like a watercolor -y look yeah that can also help to achieve a different style i will quickly dry this with my heat gun then it looks like this as you can see the ink has given us a really really grungy look and also in combination with this distressing that we've done before we have done that in the last video um, this looks really interesting when this comes together and when those layers come on top of each other it gets more interesting with every layer that you add of course it's also possible to add too many layers <laughs> i know that but in this stage i would say it makes it more interesting the more layers you have speaking about layers there's also another thing that i really really like to do to make such a stenciling even more interesting so let's first do that here on the grungy side of this project. I'm taking the same stencil, but I want to use another color. And in this case, I think we go into one of our um, accent colors. We have chosen forest moss and wild honey as those pops of colors that are, yeah, like popping out of the whole journal so in this case i think we go with forest moss i'm deciding for an area where i want to put the forest moss ink and i think here it would be great so i'm trying to remember that while i'm putting this here uh, so that i can now after I've lined up the stencil with the pattern below, I can now take the forest moss and go over that like this. You can also blend that a little bit here to the top to make sure that it's not so, yeah, like it has an outline. We don't want to have that too outstanding. I want to have that, that it looks like it is made with... Who, made with the first step in the first step so that you can't see that you have applied a second layer of ink hopefully that makes sense just like this and when you lift that up you have this color variation in the stenciling and you have your pop of color that you have chosen for the color palette here on exactly this stenciling and it brings it out way more from the background as you hopefully can see can we perhaps do something similar here to cover up this mistake that just happened when the brush has fallen apart? I don't know why, why such things are happening. Uh, let's think about that. We could take frayed burlap and go over this here because we have frayed burlap as a relatively dark color here on the clean color palette
So let's also blend that a little bit. Just like this. Yeah. It's not totally gone, but <laughs> it looks like it should be like this. Perhaps we can add a little piece of washi later here or something to cover that up completely. That really kills my nerves. <laughs> here on this grungy page, we have played around with water to get this really loose and watercolory look. Can we use water here as well? And if yes, how? I'm thinking about using water here because we've used the oxide ink here and without water, it looks a little bit boring. I mean, the oxide ink can make this really cool oxidation and why don't we use this effect here? But we don't want to have the ink like flowing around like here. I don't want to have this watercolor effect and this loose effect of the stenciling here. There's a really easy trick. Take your dry and cleaned stencil, put it just over the pattern here, line it up with the pattern to protect the paper from the water where no stenciling is. Then take some water and just carefully, really, really carefully with um, press the stencil down so that the water can't go below the stencil. Really carefully, you spritz some water only some drops that um, doesn't have to be much there to those areas where you want to have that. Then, when you think it's enough, perhaps here a little bit more, lift up the stencil. Take relatively quickly a dry paper towel. Carefully put that to your page. Lift that up. And then I can recommend to immediately dry this with your heat gun or another tool um, so that you can make sure that the, that the ink can't go into those water areas here and bleed out. So I'm just drying this. And when it's dry, it looks like this. And you can see that this cool watercolor effect and this oxidation is only on the stenciled pattern. Here, I have to admit, it turned out not so very great, <laughs> but I will show you what I've just done for the German video. Um, because here, I guess, it turned out a little bit better, and especially in the camera, you can see it a little bit better. And you can see that those, like, watercolor areas, this oxidation, especially the oxidation, of course, is only on the stenciled pattern. This requires a little bit of experience, I would say. Um, as I said here, I think it turned out better than here. Um, but the more often you do that, the better it will turn out, I would say. But this is a possibility to use water and to um, get this effect from your oxide inks without getting a totally loose and watercolory look to your stenciled pattern. Next, let's think about what could happen during your process after you have found a technique that you like for your journal and that you have figured out that fits the style of your journal. You could now think, okay, I know how to do it. I have practiced it a little bit. If I have never done it before, I have done it here and I have a little bit of practice now with this one page. And now I want to have a similar look of the stenciling through the whole journal, but firstly, not um, on every page where I want to stencil the whole pattern of the whole stencil. Perhaps I want to have only some portions here and there of the pattern. And uh, secondly, perhaps you want to have another stencil as well, another pattern, not um, those flowers in the whole journal. In this stage of the process, you could think, okay, I have some, uh, what is the word, mm, confidence, and I think you should be proud of yourself first before you do something else. That sounds a little bit kitschy but if you have managed this please 
um, stop for a second and be proud of yourself that you could manage this and then think what you want to do next. If you have the theme for your journal already, like I have the theme butterflies, then you could think, okay, when those flowers are my taste and when I like those, do I have perhaps more flowers, but other flowers, I mean different patterns, but flowers, or do I want to use something totally different? Um, and then um, perhaps you could think, how can I do that? that it is not too time consuming. Yeah, I know that many of you have not so much time for crafting and I want to show you a really, really cool way to bring a technique and patterns of stenciling to some of your pages in a really quick way. And that also, I guess, makes the journal in the end more interesting because we are going to do that a little bit randomly. So I will show you that, how I do that. But... I also have to choose another stencil that I want to use. Um, but I think I want to go with something floral as well. And I think this is the wrong uh, ring. I think I have to take this one here. So let's see. Perhaps we can also use this one um, that we had discussed in the beginning of the video so that we can see how that would look. Let's take that. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, this could be great as well. And oh, by the way, if you want to know the numbers, this is THS091. This one here with the leaves is THS078. And now, of course, you can go also totally abstract. Yeah, you, you could also use something like this. Um, if you don't want to stay in this floral theme, um, I mean, as a background for the butterflies or for whatever you have. This here, for example, could work really well for the grungy journal. And perhaps we can use that for the clean journal as well. I am excited. I don't know if that will work, but we will see. THS009 is the number of this one. And... Do we have something that is a little bit like more floralish? <laughs> this one, perhaps. <laughs> this is the number THS034. Um, I would recommend to choose not too many stencils. I mean, not too many different stencils to not being overwhelmed while you do that, what I'm showing you now. For that method, I'm going to take the pages for the Grungy Journal first. And as you can see, my camera is a little bit more <laughs> up because I need more space. Um, and of course, I want to show you everything. But um, for this method, that's what I'm trying to say, um, you need a little bit space. Um, I'm, ta I'm taking my pages and I'm laying them relatively randomly to my table and I'm also letting them overlap a little bit like this uh, so let's first take a color from the grungy palette to start here Mm, I think we are going to use ground espresso first um, to start with the darkest color because I think that's a good idea because um, the darkest color in this case gives us the most amount of grunge. Yeah, it, when I um, stencil this to the pages, it gets relatively much contrast and to not overload it with this dark color, I'm going to start with this to be able to control that a little, a little bit. So first, I want to take a few portions of this stencil that I already have used. And for that, I'm going to place the stencil totally randomly, no matter in which direction the pages are laying, here to the desk. And then I'm taking my ink and I'm just going to stencil through it. And this gives me portions of this pattern 
to several of the pages that I have here. And I'm also trying to follow the technique that I have just learned. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, thinking I was you and you have just learned the technique that I have shown you before. So that means I'm pressing a little bit harder in some areas to get it a little bit darker. And then I'm trying to blend that out. Um, even if I get only a portion of the stenciling to my page here, I will have the blending as well. Okay, so let's take <clears throat> this stencil here next. Um, I think we can go on with ground espresso for this and I'm doing exactly the same. Just randomly placing that somewhere and then I'm going to stencil through that. If you think, okay, I have already some interesting patterns here, you can just change the order of your pages before using the next stencil and the next color. So let's do that. Let's just change the order and let's also um, turn the pages upside down. So when we have that, we can take another stencil and another color. I want to go with this here next with those flowers. And which color shall we use for that? Um, I think I want to use Freight Burlap for that. And of course, uh, when you have stenciled here and there, you could also use some water now um, in exactly the same way like we've done it with the page that you can see here on the top. That is the page that we have done before to get the oxide effect of the oxide ink and to get it a little bit more loose and grungy. Water would be a great idea. Not too much, perhaps. Okay. And instead of using a brush to apply the ink, you could also do something totally different. You could also use um, the stencil, and instead of the ink pad, you could use a spray. So let's use the spray here through the stencil, and let's see how we like that. So, by the way, this is also frayed burlap, of course, because I want it to stay in the color palette. And I can already see that I like this, but it's not so 100% my style, I would say. Um, to not waste this, and I think also that this gets better when I do what I do now. Um, I will do it like this and just place the stencil here. So I think that I like this even better than this. Um, it's strange, but it's a fact. <laughs> but that's also, of course, something that you can learn from changing a medium in the middle of your process. If you use only the ink pad for the whole thing, you can never experience that you don't like this, yeah, or that you like something else better. Okay, so um, this is a little bit wet, but this is a grungy journal, so we don't care about that. I will again change the order of the pages. Okay, so let's take this stencil next and which color shall we use for that? Perhaps we could add a tiny little bit of wild honey, but not too much so that it gets not too bam. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if I already want to give up with the spray. <laughs> we also have this here. And I'm a little bit influenced at the moment by my friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. <laughs> and I've just talked to her about something totally different. And now she is in my mind in this moment. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what would she do in such a moment? That is also, I would say, a thing that you can think about during your process. I mean, the most of us are really far away from each other. Yeah, When you have a junk journal friend, um, he or she is probably relatively far away from you because... Yeah, it's often a fact that we don't have our crafty friends close to us. The same with Barbara and myself. She's very, very far away from me, even if we both live in Austria. But we are connected and it can also be helpful to think about someone or what someone would do in such a situation to come a step forward and to come um, deeper into a process Or also, um, it's good for trying something new, I would say. So let's think about using a spray again. Ah, Barbara, if this goes wrong, it's <laughs> time that we meet again and that I <laughs> talk to you perhaps a little bit. Uh, <laughs> first, let's check which spray could we use. Um... I have ground espresso, oxide spray and spray stay. Um, I have brushed corduroy and I really love brushed corduroy. Can we perhaps um, make a little mix out of ground espresso and brushed corduroy? That could look perhaps nice. Let's try that. Barbara, I think we have to talk with each other. This looks not good, but why? I like this better, but <clears throat> when I see Barbara doing this, I mean spraying through a stencil, then it looks way better than this. I mean, it's grungy, but it's a little bit weird. It's really a little bit weird. But perhaps it's the paper that is the problem. Can we perhaps try it here on this page? Interestingly, I like this on the other paper way better than on the back of this photo paper where I have printed the printable. This is for me a little bit too grainy, I would say. It's, I don't know, it's grungy, but strange, really strange. I like this way better and the paper that I have used to not waste the ink, that is this one here. I've just taken the stencil and I've put it upside down here to the page um, to not waste the ink. This I like even better than this. Um, even if this is exactly the same paper like this. <laughs> yeah, so that's a little bit strange. But that is also something that you can, of course, learn during your process. If you have something like this and you know okay on this paper i like it better than on this paper then choose um the pages that are this kind of paper and do more of this stenciling on that paper yeah and don't use this paper anymore or spritz the um ink spray directly to the stencil on a scrap piece of paper and then turn it upside down and um, place it here to get this effect to your page. Also a possibility. Okay, so I think for this journal, um, for me, the stenciling is already enough. I like what I have here and I really like how random that came out. So I will take all of those pages and put them back together to make the same thing for the clean journal. So let's take the pages of the clean journal and also lay them down here really randomly. 
to our table. Let's again start with this stencil here and let's first take perhaps hickory smoke again. And I also want to use some Lost Shadow. Please don't be confused, I'm using this thing here to apply the ink because I have to buy um, this kind of brush for Lost Shadow. I've realized that I don't have enough of those other brushes, but it uh, should make no difference um, if we use the other tool. The thing Lost Shadow comes out really well on those more darker pages like this brown packaging paper here for example this looks really elegant i would say i love this this is really amazing next let's take this stencil here and let's see how that comes out <laughs> for the clean style Wow, I think that looks really great because it's so crisp. Um, I really like how this came out and I think it's okay for a clean journal. And um, even if the, um, the pattern itself says this is like a splatter, like coffee stains, like grunge, yeah, um, the way we have stenciled it is clean and i think that is okay for the clean journal <laughs> hopefully that makes sense <clears throat> and what i also like for a more clean style is to take the brush and make a like rectangle out of the pattern by putting the ink like this through the stencil and then blending that out to the sides a little bit so that you get a relatively controlled area to your page not so extremely randomly not yeah like we did it with the other pages not only a portion here a portion there but something that is regular that makes it <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me please that makes it more clean as well and a little bit more controlled. And what I really can't get out of my head at the moment is the thing with the spraying. I mean spraying the spray. <laughs> because <clears throat> the idea behind this series was to do exactly the same things in both of the journals in the clean journal and in the grungy journal and we've spritzed the spray for the other journal and i'm just thinking is that possible here as well and if yes how hmm i think that the color of the spray is relatively important for the outcome. On the other pages we had a really big contrast between the color of the spray and the page and it turned out really gritty and grungy. What if we perhaps take a really light gray spray, for example Lost Shadow or Pumice Stone, and we spritz that to the, uh, through the stencil to get less contrast to the pages. Perhaps that would be a possibility. Strange. So this is nearly completely dry and uh, I can see that I don't like that so much for the clean journal. The contrast is not so big, that's okay, but it's a little bit too loose for me. 
but this is also something that you can experience of course during such a process and again when you see something that you don't like stop for a moment and be proud of yourself that you could see that you don't like that that again sounds a little bit kitschy but i think it's really important for the process and here with this page nothing is lost this is a loose page you can still take this and put that back into your stash for another journal if you don't like that for the journal that you are working on at the moment where's the problem yeah here you have something i don't say that this is not nice but perhaps it's not the right page for the journal that i'm working on or i can decide okay I know that I don't like this, but I want to keep the page in the journal. How can I change it up so that it later on looks clean again? That's also, of course, a possibility. Um, one thing that we could do with this page would be to put the stencil on top again and stencil through it with a brush with another color to get a more cleaner look on top of this. That would be a possibility to to keep this page for the style. When you have finished this kind of random stenciling to your pages, you might think that looks really strange. I'm confused, yeah? <laughs> so let me quickly flip through the pages so that you can see um, this a little bit better. And that's also something that, of course, you can do after you have finished the stenciling. Flip through your pages and try to get... Yeah, like an idea of, is this enough? Do I want to add more? Do I like it? Try to get a connection to those pages. But perhaps if you have never done this before, you might think, okay, what, what the heck is that? Yeah, this is a little piece of something on my page, but what is that? I want to mention that we are still in the very beginning of our process of making those journals and this is still mm, one of the first steps that we are doing to make our pages more interesting in the end <clears throat> when your journal is finished those tiny things can make a really big difference now it looks perhaps totally strange especially if you perhaps have never done it like this before, but in the end, you will hopefully see that those things can make your journal really interesting and, yeah, that when the whole thing comes together, it looks like one thing and not like random stenciling or random distressing or something like that. So I hope you could take some tips and tricks from this video for your own creative process thank you very much for watching and see you with my next video have a very great day bye bye